I'm Dr. Miner. Today I'm here with Matt, and you have been diagnosed with what? Severe sleep apnea. Severe sleep apnea. And typically the treatment for that is they're going to put you on CPAP. And that is of no interest to Matt. And so something is better than nothing. And we're going to make a mandibular advancement device. So with this mandibular advancement device, what this is going to do is it goes in the patient's mouth and it's going to pull the lower jaw forward because the tongue <clears throat> is attached to the lower jaw here. And when people sleep, the tongue falls back, blocks the airway. And so when the tongue gets, or the lower jaw gets pulled forward, that lifts the tongue off the back of the throat so the air can still go through. Okay, so what we're going to do is get some measurements because we want to position this device in a certain way. And so part of it is with snoring. And so do a snore sound for me. You gotta do better than that. There you go, now you're getting closer. There you go. Okay, so now we're gonna put this, this has some measurements on it. I'm gonna put this in. And you're gonna find a little notch there. Okay, do a snore sound again. So we're getting, still getting some there, so I don't think that's the one. Okay, go and open. And here's our next one. That's a little better. I'm not sure we're quite there yet. So, but we're going to keep doing this until we get the, the right measurement. So we found our measurement where we want to position this. And you made an interesting comment to me that you noticed something with your breathing while that was in. What was that? Yeah, it, uh, it was easier. I felt like the, my air passage was more open. Than yeah, normal. so that's what we're looking for is this flow of air is easier. Now the other thing... We were talking about kind of things that you noticed, like you think you sleep well, mm -hmm. what you're telling me, but then during the day you had kind of a foggy brain kind of thing. What else? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't um, wake up a ton during the night, uh, but I wake up tired, and uh, sometimes I even feel like I wake up ha having just done a workout. Uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, and also a brain fog. At times. Okay. Something interesting with this is Matt has been diagnosed with severe sleep apnea. And what is your age? I am 29. 29. Right? So typically people think this is like an old person's condition. No. Right? This can happen at any age. Infants can have it. Children definitely can have it. You know, which is often missed in kids. And... Right, we're seeing somebody at 29 that has it. You know, sometimes people look at like the neck neck size. You know, that neck does not really indicative of sleep apnea. And also, Matt is very athletic. He likes to get out and exercise. So when you look at his body, you know he looks fit. You know, so he does not fit that typical kind of criteria of sleep apnea. You know, so it's good we're getting this treated at this age. Treating sleep apnea is going to prolong his life. During our conversation, Matt has talked to us about, you know, he doesn't eat a whole lot, he exercises, but he still carries a little bit of weight around the middle. And that can be a component or a byproduct of sleep apnea. You know, when we think about it, you know, if we're not breathing right, we're not taking in the oxygen, and oxygen is what's needed to burn fat. And so if we're not breathing well, we're not getting that oxygen, the body's compensating for that lack of oxygen and putting the oxygen someplace else rather than into burning fat. And so it's likely with this that we get Matt breathing well, he's probably going to see a few more pounds come off if that's what he wants to do. Mm -hmm.
We're back with Matt and we have his sleep appliance. We're going to treat his sleep apnea and so we're going to fit the appliance today. And you looking forward to that? I am. I'm ready to do it. All right. Okay, open there. You put these in on the top first. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, oh, uh, pinch you? Uh huh. Yeah. Then we pinch you. My gum. Oh, on your gum? Or not on the gum, sorry. Does that feel? Does that like it's all in? Yeah. Okay. Feel any pressure spots or anything? Yeah, I know. Nope. Okay, so our final step on this for today is we're going to make what's called an AM aligner. And what happens with the appliance is it pulls the jaw forward, and so in the morning, the jaw is going to be a little bit forward and we need the jaw to go back into place where it was. You know, we don't want it to stay out there. And so uh, we have a little disc. We're going to heat this up in some water. It's going to soften it. He's going to bite on it like he normally does right now. And so then in the mornings when he takes his appliance out, this will go in for a few minutes to help reposition the jaw joint. So have it open. This is going to be a little warm. Straight down on your back teeth, all the way down. Okay, we're gonna mold this up. It's already getting a little stiff. Set for a minute, get hard again. So while we're waiting for this AM aligner to cool down and, and firm back up, we'll just make some notes, uh, talking points about sleep. And sleep is one of those things that can, contributes to a lot of different factors that is often overlooked. You know, high blood pressure, strokes, heart attacks, diabetes, you know, several other things like that. Uh, we see it related to like people clenching, you know, and wear on the teeth. That's related to sleep more than it is stress. Stress, is kind of, stress has kind of been a, for lack of better words, kind of a made up excuse for it. Um, you know, where there's a high correlation with how one sleeps with the wear on the teeth. And uh, so by addressing this, we're gonna actually help prolong life. You know, because you think with diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, all of those end life prematurely. It's been about three months now that Matt's had his appliance. And how's it gone? What do you how do you how how do you wake up? How do you feel? What do you notice? Uh, and honestly it's it's significant. Um, I've noticed that I sleep better, I'm waking up um, more refreshed, which I was not used to, so it was a big change. Okay. So what's that like now? Um, How do you like that? You know, it's, it's nice because I, I feel like seven, eight hours of sleep um, is enough now. Um, I mean, just normal. I, I, feel, I, I would imagine I feel normal now. Okay. Yeah, as far as uh, what I should feel like waking up. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize uh, uh, how bad it was until okay. I got good sleep because of this. Okay. Yeah, and that's typically kind of what we hear is people are used to one way, even though it's like really bad, and then once they find out that now it's better, they they see how how bad it really was. And tell me about uh, snoring. Do you hear anything about snoring from your wife? Uh, she says I don't snore anymore. Uh, which is helpful for everybody. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So it's kind of like two for one. Yeah. Sleep better, no <laughs> snoring. Everybody's yeah. sleeping good. Yeah. It's big difference. It really is. Okay. Yeah. Great.